First of all, inferiority complexes come from feeling some kind of way about my status in regards or in contrast to white folks. To be honest, and, and, and I, I hate I hate being I hate saying this, man, because it's not cool. But to be honest, I don't see white folks as my equal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a god, bruh. I know who and what I am. I don't see them as my equal. I have absolutely no reason whatsoever to feel any kind of way in contrast to them because I don't see them as being anything worthy of me to even be jealous of, of anything worthy of me to even measure myself against. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's going to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Most of y'all probably know I really like some of the stuff that Nearly Fuller Jr. says, right? You know, I've done videos talking about him, extolling him some of his uh, perspectives and views, you know what I'm saying? Um, his insight, you know, was, was, was on point on many things. But on this one thing, I have to say he got wrong. I gotta take my glasses off to read. And, and that's something, I know most people gotta put reading glasses on. I have to actually take my glasses off to read. He said that all people in the known universe, both skilled and unskilled, who have attempted to establish justice and or who have attempted to eliminate racism, i.e. white supremacy, have so far failed. Here's the thing. Nearly Fuller Jr. is dead wrong about that. What? Because nobody has really tried to establish justice or eliminate racism or white supremacy. Nobody has done it. Nobody has done it. Because the system itself is built upon them. The so-called black leaders use this to exploit us. You know, social injustice, i.e. racism and stuff like that, has been the meal ticket, literally, for uh, so-called black leaders generation after generation after generation. I mean, it has made some of us very rich. It has made a lot of us, I mean, a whole lot of us, very well off, right? It has afforded a, a, a nice quality of life for a whole lot of us that bring absolutely nothing to the table, that never do anything to eradicate racism or white supremacy, right? It's just all lip service. So what I would have to say to that is that nobody has actually tried, not even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. His, his goal was never to even stop racism or white supremacy. His goal was for us to separate ourselves from their system. That's what he was talking about, building a nation within the nation, getting outside of their system. And Farrakhan never pursued that end. Once Farrakhan took over, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad passed away and Farrakhan took over, he never, he never, uh, he never pursued that end. The point I'm making is that most black so-called activists have never so much as attempted to eradicate white supremacy or the or create a form of justice within the system because first of all it can't happen uh -huh. white supremacy is not something that you can change because it is an ideology and you cannot make people stop not liking you <laughs> you know you can't and this is what i try to tell people you know i had this one young fool come on my channel talk about the victim mentality but look I get tired of telling people on my, on, in my comment section, I am not your interpretation of me. I am the last man that you can ever point to and claim he has a victim mentality, man, because first of all, inferiority complexes come from feeling some kind of way about my status in regards or in contrast to white folks. To be honest, and, and, and I, I hate, I hate being... I hate saying this, man, because 
it's not cool. But to be honest, I don't see white folks as my equal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm a god, bro. I know who and what I am. I don't see them as my equal. I have absolutely no reason whatsoever to feel any kind of way in contrast to them because I don't see them as being anything worthy of me to even be jealous of or anything worthy of me to even measure myself against. I am not one of these dudes in these sections of YouTube that's trying to measure myself by how much I am like or liked by white folks. That is not me. I don't want them to like me and I don't necessarily want them to dislike me. That's the difference. I'm not measuring myself by how much they like me and I'm not measuring myself by how much they dislike me because I'm still human and I, and I see them as being human also. I do respect them as people, as human beings. And I do deal with them in a respectful manner on individual basis. But I know that in a collective situation, right, these people are what they are. And I'm, I'm not expecting them to change, nor do I care if they do change. Bruh, I told y'all in a previous video or recent video, I am a man. I am an alpha. I walk my walk. I could care less who likes me or who don't like me. I don't, my life is not gonna be determined by who likes me and who don't like me. I don't care. As long as I got the women, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I smash white women. Look, I, I smash more white women than most white men have. They are not, I mean, I, I have no reason to be jealous of them. I have smashed more Mexican women than most Mexican men have. I have smashed more Asians than most Asian men have. I have no reason whatsoever to, to have any type of complex when it comes to race. Because I actually, actually wholeheartedly see myself as I, I, I honest to God believe. It, I could be wrong. I, I'm not wrong. And I know I'm not wrong. But let's say for the sake of argument, I could be dead wrong. But I honest to God believe that I am a direct descendant of the original human beings. Why would I be jealous of the people that I honest to God believe are the last people to devolve? And I don't mean evolution, evolve, I mean devolve. I see them as being a actual step backwards in the evolutionary um process, right? In in, in the in the progression of human so-called evolution. I see them as a step backwards because their genes are recessive. The sun kills them. They are not like me, bro. We are not the same. So I don't really see them as anything I should be jealous of. So when the dude come at me talking about inferiority complexes and you know, or, or, I mean, victim mentalities i have no victim mentality that said would you want me to not say that we are the uh, uh they hate it and despise demographic in america we are that's not a victim mentality that is a reality that is our status here in this system and it's going to be our status in this system nothing y'all can do y'all can protest y'all can beg y'all can march you can do anything you want to do. It's not going to change because we don't have nobody that's really trying to change it. You don't have a single black politician that is actually trying to change the way this system is. If the blacks are on the Republican side, they will tell you, will look you in your eyes and tell you there's no racism. Yeah. They will look you in your eyes and tell you that racism is not a real thing. Come on, man. You gotta be out your mind. And on the other side, man, you know what I'm saying, they got their own flaws dealing with the Democrats. But, but, but the point is, nobody is really trying to eradicate the injustices of the system or the inequalities of the system because it goes beyond race. First of all, that is not a topic that's exclusive to race. 
when you start talking about injustices and inequalities, it goes beyond race. And nobody is trying to eradicate this stuff in this system. Nobody. So, <clears throat> Neely Fuller Jr. was dead wrong about that one. Everybody has failed because nobody has tried. And I believe nobody has tried because everyone instinctively know you can't do anything about it. It's going to be what it is until we, we remove ourselves from it. That's the only thing you can do. But you know who pushed for integration? Y'all think white folks did that. No, white folks didn't do that. We did that. Our black leaders. I mean, our black leaders have been selling us out since the beginning, bro. We got to stop trusting people just because they are black. And we got to do what's best for us as individuals. And then link up with like-minded individuals that's doing what's best for them as individuals. And then when our goals align as individuals, we come, we confederate, we uh, conjoin, we, uh, come on, give me some words. We come together and form enclave communities that are separated from this system. That is the only answer. Because as long as we are in this system, we will have to contend with white supremacy. Yeah. Because white folks run it. And how they maintain power. Don't get me wrong. You can't really convince me that those at the very tip top are racist. You can't convince me of that. But you do have some very, very, very wealthy racists in this country. Like the Koch brothers. So... Nearly Fuller was wrong. Nobody has tried to stop it because you really can't stop it. This stuff is just a part of the DNA of the system that we live under. Injustices, inequalities, is built into it. It's built into the fabric of capitalism. As long as we live in a capitalistic society, we will have inequalities. We will have injustices. And like I say, those at the top they use these, these, these differences in people, these social issues, you know, the LGBT thing, you know what I'm saying, and conservatism and liberalism. They use all of these things, religion. They use these things to pit people against each other. I be listening to boxing channels on YouTube, bro. And <clears throat> the amount of bigotry you hear coming out of black men. It's astounding. When I'm talking about religious bigotry, you got all these black wannabe Christian dudes that have this disdain towards Islam. Like, where in the hell did they grow up? Because every hood I've ever been in had Muslims everywhere. They act like black Muslims is something that's rare that you just don't see. Every hood that I've ever been in had black Muslims everywhere. They had black Jews, what we call Hebrews everywhere they have moors with your muslims everywhere they have five percenters with your muslims everywhere they had sunni muslims everywhere they have nation of islam muslims everywhere so what kind of black environment did these black men grow up in where they have this hatred towards islam who could have fed that to them they had to come up around white folks because there's no way they grew up in the hood no way. Which means they don't support anything that don't come from white Christianity. But yet they see themselves as being pro-black. Do you honestly think they're going to eradicate racism? When their core philosophy is given to them by white Jesus? Come on, man. Come on, man. Nah, Neely Fuller is dead wrong with that. Nobody has tried to shut this down. This, the talking point of being an activist is nothing more than a financial tool for 99.999% of all so-called black activists. That's all it is. It's either expression of hatred and anger and disappointment 
or as a financial tool. That's all it is. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it starts off as, as an expression of hatred, disappointment, and anger towards the system. And if they catch on and start moving up the ranks and start getting people to follow, then it becomes all about money with them. But at the same time, what all of them really want is a seat at the table of this corrupt system. And that is the main problem. What they want is to be a part of it. They don't want to dismantle it. They don't want to change it. They want to be a part of it. And that's where I differ fundamentally. I want no parts of it. None. Zero. Zip. I want no parts of it. I'm going to leave it at that. You think about it. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Till next time, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Blackout for Salon.